No, I haven't gone completely nuts. There's a very good reason why I'm reviewing this Honda Super Cub 125. So watch the video all the way through to find out. first thing to say about this Honda Cub 125 is that it does 188 miles per gallon. Yes, you heard me right, 188. And that is fantastic. And while these petrol prices are sky high, it's great that these little Honda 125s are so economical. So if you're looking for a mode of transport that is very, very cost effective, then you can't go wrong with one of these Hondas. So much more economical than a car, obviously, and so much better than sitting on the bus or the train, looking at other people snorting and coughing and sneezing and catching COVID. You're out on your own, you've got independence, and it's extremely cost effective to run. It really is a great fun little bike to ride. Um, you can get on and off uh, that way or through the middle, whatever your preference is. You've got the center stand and that's really good too. Normal brake there and there, no clutch, so it's semi-automatic gearbox. And you've got the gears on the left with a heel shifter, which we'll go into in a minute. Um, but it's a very maneuverable bike and you can turn it round in no space at all. Three point turns are ever so easy. Um, put it back on the stand, nice and simple, it's ever so light. So brilliant bike in the city, in traffic, commuting, everyday riding, and also good to go out and about and explore countryside. You wouldn't want to go very far on one of these, I wouldn't use it for touring, and it will do 60 miles an hour, maybe a tad more if you try, um, but it's not the sort of bike you'd want to go more than 60 miles an hour on. And that maneuverability at slow speeds also makes it a little bit less stable when it's really bombing along. Um, but they're not designed for speed. And just looking at it, I actually think it's a cool bike now. And years ago, I remember seeing these and they've been going for donkey's years. And when I was a kid, I thought, you know, they're not very cool, are they? But strangely, the way it's developed over the years, a bit like the Porsche 911, it's just subtle changes. It is actually a cool bike. I genuinely think it's a cool bike. So um, I'd be seen on this as a second bike. It would be great. If it's your only bike, fabulous. I mean, really is fabulous. I think it looks fabulous in this color scheme with the gray and the red. It really does look good. And you've got just enough sort of chrome shiny bits to add a little uh, highlight to the bike. Um, it is beautifully designed from all angles. It's, it's nice and slim, it's narrow. These um, fairings or what, whatever you might want to call them do actually keep the muck off of you. So I've been going through some puddles and what have you and my trousers are okay and most of the muck gets caught on there. So that's really good. And this seat stays where it is. There's a little button here and this seat lifts up, there's your petrol tank, and you press the button there, and there's a little storage compartment with a tool kit in there, we'll show you that, and your owner's manual. Enough space to put a few little bits like your phone or whatever, so that's really good. You've got a disc brake at the front, and an old-fashioned drum brake at the rear, but the stopping power is good enough for the type of bike that it is. Now, as I'm quite tall and wide, I can only see about a tenth of the road behind me in the mirrors, uh, so I'd have to sort of contort my body like that to actually be able to see anything behind me. Um, but that doesn't matter because um, it makes for a pleasurable ride because you're not aware of the tail back behind you because you're not going fast enough. So uh, you're blissfully unaware of things behind and that's a good thing. The gears are on a heel toe shifter. So from neutral, first is toe down, second down, third down, fourth down, and then third Second, first, neutral with the heel. These 
bar ends look nice. You've got the wrap effect on the grips there. On the left, you've got your lights and your horn and your indicators. On the right, your starter, and that's it. Um, nice and simple, nice and minimalistic. You've got a nice analog uh, speedometer there and simple uh, retro styling, love that. Uh, the indicators don't self-cancel, which is potentially dangerous because you could be minding your own business going along, indicating left and you're not aware of it and someone pulls out, hits you in the side. Um, so be careful, make sure you self-cancel the indicators um, because that can be very dangerous. This Honda Cub has got a centre stand and a lot of people have remarked on previous videos about other bikes that they think a centre stand is a good thing and I never really thought about it until now to be honest and the good thing is when you're cleaning the bike I noticed you can just spin the wheel around and get to clean the whole wheel without having to move the bike backwards and forwards and obviously if you're oiling your chain that makes it much easier because you just spin it around and, and spray so that's actually quite a good feature. The tyres are really narrow um, but it holds the road perfectly fine so I've been sort of weaving around some country lanes today and throwing it around some of the corners and it's perfectly all right so uh, it handles really nicely it's got a quite a firm ride but this suspension is is good enough for what it is it does soak up the bumps all right but if you're crashing into potholes you're going to feel it but that's not the sort of bike it's not a motocross bike now size wise I'm six foot two and that's how I look on the bike um, you know, it's perfectly fine to be honest. The only time the size uh, matters is it hits my knee. So if I'm turning sharply, I'll stick my knee out, but that's not a problem. Um, but it's not designed for tall people particularly. If you're between say five foot five and five foot 10, you'll be perfectly all right on it. And um, it's got a very short wheelbase. The geometry of the steering means it's very maneuverable. is so maneuverable it's like a fly it'll just change direction instantly uh, it's brilliant and that's what they're good at so if you need a bike that's very maneuverable in the city and what have you then this is really worth considering I don't know if you've ever thought about it but having no clutch on a bike like this which is supremely maneuverable makes it even more easy to maneuver because when you want to just stop turn around do a three-point turn um, you haven't got to worry about slipping the clutch or anything like that you just turn the bike uh, keep it in gear and off you go again so it really does make maneuvering effortless and super easy you can of course take a pillion on the back and I will demonstrate being a pillion uh, it's quite a comfortable seat actually you just hold the person in front of you um, I could actually ride it like this that would be good wouldn't it uh, but yeah it's actually a perfectly comfortable seat I don't like these bikes where the pillion seat is sort of up there and you seem to be perched on uh, the back uh, this is great it is ever so light um, only 110 kilos so if you're maneuvering the bike around um, it's easy to change direction and shunt it about because uh, there's no weight at all and that's a great thing it's only a 125, it's not hugely powerful or talky. It uh, produces 9.6 horsepower uh, and 10.4 newton meters of torque, higher up in the rev range. Um, but it does pull quite comfortably at lower revs as well. So it's a good engine. These Honda engines are marvelous. They've had the same design of engine for donkey's years. I had a Honda ST70 with the same sort of engine design with the cylinder sort of sticking out the front. Uh, and it's been going for so long, they are reliable, they are strong, and they'll pretty much tackle everything you throw at them. I've enjoyed every minute of riding this bike today. It really is fabulous. It's a great second bike. It's a great 
motorcycle to have if you want to save some money uh, commuting, getting to work, getting about. Fantastic fuel economy. Uh, it is cool. It may not have been cool in the past, but I think it's evolved into something that is actually quite a cool bike. Uh, I'm quite happy to be seen on it, and I've been going around today waving at people, and it's great. They smile. It's brilliant. It's a fabulous motorcycle bike. So I would highly recommend it. Uh, check out the specs on Honda's website uh, in your own country. They can vary from country to country. Uh, so check that all out. Um, but if you're thinking about one, ask us some questions, happy to answer them. As I said, I would recommend it. It's a lovely bike. And uh, please see our other Honda reviews. We've got Honda Rebel 1100 and the Cross Adventure coming up soon. And <clears throat> later in the week, Royal Enfield Classic 350 and a Honda Monkey. So lots of bikes uh, around. And it's a big Honda week at the moment, so everything seems to have come at once. But that doesn't matter because I love riding with Hondas. They're great bikes. You can't go wrong with a Honda. Don't forget to subscribe and like, comment, and we'll see you on the next video.